Lord our God. For the Lord our God is mighty. The Lord our God is omnipotent. The Lord our God, He is wonderful. Hallelujah! Salvation and glory, honor and power unto the Lord our God. For the Lord our God is mighty. The Lord our God is omnipotent. The Lord our God, He is wonderful. Hallelujah! Salvation and glory, honor and power unto the Lord our God. For the Lord our God is mighty. The Lord our God is omnipotent. The Lord our God, He is wonderful. Hallelujah! Salvation and glory, honor and power, He is wonderful. Hallelujah! Salvation and glory, honor and power, he is wonderful. All oh, praises be to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is wonderful. All oh, praises be to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is wonderful. Hello, I'm Pastor John Penton, the pastor of the Greater Heights Church of God in Christ, located in Tacoma, Washington. Well, this is another Sunday that we can say that we have uh, been a part of this lockdown or part of the uh, so-called social distance and seeing ourselves so that we can protect ourselves from uh, this, this virus. Well, let me tell you something. I have been talking with pastors all over the country, some, and most of them said that this has been uh, working out for the good, even though they have a, a desire to be with their people and to be in close proximity, and I certainly want to do that too. But I found out that uh, even under these situations, I found out the what I call the meager churches in terms of numbers and the mega churches in terms of numbers are on even playing field now because certainly we utilize technology of this day to reach our people. And it seems to be working very well for us in terms of uh, 
the response we are getting and the contact we have with the people using different technologies like Zoom and uh, chat line and all of those uh, vehicle medium whereby we can uh, be in close proximity by virt virtue uh, concept. So it's working out. And we also found out that uh, people are giving and the churches seem to be maintaining its financial responsibility. So I can say, wow, God, you have been doing your thing. And so let's look at it in a positive light. Uh, God got a plan for all of this. This pandemic that we are in, uh, we're not saying God caused it. And yes, he allowed it. And we know that because nothing happened without God knowing it. But I can truly say, if we look for God to uh, use us to help bring a witness to Christ during this time, I believe he will help us. Because God, God is raising up people right now so that they can be a part of the solution for all this. And they should definitely give God the credit and the glory because Jesus Christ is soon to return. But he can't return until the gospel is preached to the four corners of the earth. And what better means in the modern day uh, technology that we can get the word out, at least uh, help the word spread out. But I would like to talk to you uh, today concerning uh, Paul's writing in the book of Romans, Romans 8, 28. Uh, join me in prayer and then we'll certainly go farther. Heavenly Father, guide this message and lead this message to penetrate the heart of the hearers. And I thank you, God, for encouraging us today, even though uh, sometimes we feel that we are down in the dumps. But thank God for the Holy Ghost that raises up when God work in us. So God bless us today. Bless the hearers. If they don't know Jesus Christ, let them have a burning desire to know you for themselves today. And God, those that know you, give them, oh God, inspiration and let them know their purpose so that they can be working toward that and looking for you to do that in their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're going to ask you to turn into the book of Romans uh, the book of Romans and the 20, I'm sorry, the 8th chapter and the 28th verse. That would be the focus today of Paul's writing when he said that we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. And then he said to them who are the called Passed it according to his purpose. What are you called for today? Some of you have been living a life that uh, God is trying to give you direction, but somehow in our life we get bogged down with the things of the world. But I guarantee you, if we focus upon the will of God and ask him to give us our purpose a lot clear, boy, you'll find out these are exciting times rather than it's a troubled time, but it's an exciting time for the believer because I believe God is going to use some of his people, uh, all of his people in certain ways, but you particularly out there that are listening today, I believe someone out there is God is going to use for his purpose to bring glory to the kingdom of God. Whatever that may be, I'm not sure, but I do know God uses people to fulfill his purpose. Well, I'm going to use an illustration of a personality that lived not in our time today because most people are dead and gone because this man is Mr. George Washington Carver. They call him Mr. Peanut. Who would have thought a peanut would bring a glory to God and, and consequently draw people to uh, the, the power that God has for elevating uh, people even in the time uh, 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 that he lived in during the Civil War because his mother, I believe her name was Mary, she was a slave and he was born in slavery. But through his birth, God had a 
purpose for him. We're going to talk about him, but we also can see some biblical characters. In fact, the author of Romans, uh, you can see in his life that he had experiences that related to what he just written because he had a desire to go to Rome after his conversion, and yet he didn't have the desire to go in chain. But that's how he went. But his desire was to preach the gospel to those that was in authority. And he did do that. But I'm sure before he had that experience on the Damascus Road, he didn't have no idea that he was going to be preaching the gospel when he was a, an advocate, a persecutor of the, those that preached the gospel before he became converted. Look at God. God can use the worst of time to bring the best of, of things that happen to help promote his purpose. So Paul went on uh, to say many things in his, in his uh, imprisonment. For example, we all quote this scripture all the time. I can do what? All things to Christ who strengthened me. Now, that doesn't sound like that was written from a man incarcerated. Well, this man was incarcerated, but look at the Holy Ghost giving him a word to be encouraged even being incarcerated. That's why it's so important that we understand God can use the simplicity of a peanut, if you will, as George Washington Carver have used uh, to, this, uh, to see the working of God, to have a message for those that will listen that Jesus Christ is Lord. So let, let, let's focus on, on, on George Washington Carver for a minute. If you allow me to read just a little biography, a portion of this biography of George Washington Carver, because I, I was intrigued by the fact that this was critical time when blacks uh, was definitely not recognized as a people, we were marginalized because we were slaves and, and people made us feel lesser. But God had a purpose for Mr. Carver and we're going to try to relate to that. So if you allow me to, to read a little bit about his biography and this portion of the biography simply say no name. And that's uh, the title of this portion of his biography. He said, shortly after Abraham Lincoln became president of the United States, uh, Fort Sumter, uh, South Carolina, was uh, bombarded by Confederate forces, uh, commencing the Civil War. In the midst of the Civil War, look at this, and we were considered marginalized, no person, no kind of value. But look at God as we read on. He said, commencing the Civil War between 1861 and 1865, America fought a contest of self-destruction whose outcome would determine the nation's future and the destiny of her slaves. God had a plan. And this uh, man, George Washington Carver, was in that plan because I know he loved God. And then on it says, on a unrecorded date during this conflict, a black boy was born whom God empowered to become one of the most influential men of his day and arguably the most remarkable American who, can, who had ever lived. Well, this writer gave him a high accolade even in the times that he lived in. George Washington Carver was a slave from birth. He said without even a surname, he didn't even have a surname, he took on the name of his owner, Washington. He said he grew uh, to manhood during the Reconstruction, the time of the South's most intense racial, I mean ra racial, Yes, it is. Hatred and violence against her former uh, bond servant. In other words, they had no love for African American, particularly uh, in this case, we're talking about George Washington Carver. But look at God. Let's, let's talk about this just a little bit. And then here, this part of the biography said, talking with God, however, through his trust in God, Carver triumphed over misfortune. 
becoming a friend of f three presidents and a confidant of millionaires. He said, and a scientist of world renown. He said, the magnitude of his accomplishment as a botanist are only rivaled by his success in teaching students to know God by studying nature. Wow. He said, he wrote of uh, his student, and this is our quote. He said, I want them to find Jesus. Praise God. How long, how I long for each one to walk and talk with the great creator through the things he has created. That's a portion of uh, George Washington uh, Carver's biography. He wanted his students, he was a professor uh, eventually at Tuskegee uh, Institute, uh, at University of Tuskegee, and he wanted his students to understand the the God that he knew, and the God that he that gave him his insight. But we did not know, and he did not know, that God will also impact his life, whereby he would make a product that will continue to be one of the best, uh, should I say, products that we have today. One, and that is peanut butter. Who would have thought that an uh, African-American man born a slave, disenfranchised, marginalized, uh, didn't even have a name given to him by his original parents, but God had a name for him, and he, it was his son, hallelujah, that worked through Mr. Carver to become who he was. But look at what he did. He did many things. He did many discoveries even uh, during that time uh, uh, of the era that he lived in. Look what we're living in now. The era we're living in right now, we're going through uh, some tough times. People are on uh, of other ethnicity are just realizing some of the suffering that we, our parents, have experienced many years ago, and some of them are just now realizing that. And somehow God has touched some of their hearts. And I believe this is the time that God is going to move, not only in the African-American uh, uh, race, but I think he's going to use them specifically uh, for to bring, uh, to help usher in the end times. Because I believe God wants to demonstrate that he is God and he can do whatever he wants to do. In this case with George Washington Carver, he used him even when people had put him out and, and gave him uh, no kind of honor as being a person of relevance. But God had a purpose for him. All things do work together for good for them that love God. And Mr. Carver loved God. So Carver did many things. Let me uh, read some of the historical perspective as I go through a chronological uh, uh, timetable to show you how God used him uh, in his day. In 19, uh, he was born, of course, in 1861 sometime. And that's not necessarily a, a sure thing because, of course, they didn't know uh, when he was born because of the records, how they kept records of that day. But he was born in what they call Diamond Grove, Missouri. In 1891, he enrolled in Simpson College to study piano and art. Look at God. Even in that day, God gave him a hunger for education. God don't mean that he's uh, all the time that he's going to make you great just by the fact that you love him, yes, he will. But he will give you the unction to better yourself, to encourage yourself to become educated because he has a purpose down the road for you, and therefore he needs you to prepare yourself. Now, it's kind of ironic. The Apostle Paul was educated, <laughs> but he was educated by the... Uh, the Judah, if you will, the people of that day on the other side. They believed in God. 
Uh, he was educated in the best of schools of that day, but they was they definitely wasn't Christians at the time, because in their mind, uh, Jesus Christ hadn't come. And but here's Paul. Paul got uh, indignant uh, uh, with those that believed in Christ because he hated them. He became a persecutor of the saints. But God had a plan for him, but he was one of the uh, person that were educated in the best schools at that time. So that, uh, but yeah, look at this. When you read on and you'll find out when he went on in the book of Acts, when he went on to persecute the saints, he went on to Damascus, God met him on that road uh, to Damascus, knocked him off his horse, and called him by name, called him to the ministry. This is what uh, I believe is applicable to Paul's writing, even in Romans, when he said all things work together for good, because he was a persecutor of the, of the saints. But now, after his conversion, remember, his name was Saul, but after his conversion, God named him Paul. And I believe that at that time, now he became a, a person that God could use to bring glory to his name. And you know most of the story that Paul, when he got converted, nobody uh, could rival him because he was very smart. But he went to school and be prepared. He didn't know he was going to school to become uh, the uh, prominent writer of the whole New Testament. He wrote the majority of all the letters that we see in the New Testament. But he did that because God had a purpose for him. And then in 1994, or 18 rather, 94, uh, George uh, Washington Carver uh, received his BS degree from Iowa Agricultural College. And then in 1896, he received a Master of Agriculture degree from Iowa State College, uh, joined faculty of Tuskegee Institute. Wow, he became part of uh, the Tuskegee Institute. And then in 1921, he appeared before the U.S. House of Representatives Committee of Ways and Means regarding the tariff of peanuts. <laughs> Look at God. He let him become a person that can argue before great men. The Bible says your gift will make room for you and bring you before great men. In this case, Mr. Carver was brought before the House of Representatives to argue uh, the value of peanuts. Now remember, in, well, if you know a little bit of history as I was reading, they usually only give you 10 minutes uh, to plead your case. In this case, he was such a dynamic or oratorical uh, person expressing the gift that God had given him. They gave him one hour and 40 minutes. And, and if you read uh, Paul's transition in life, when he was uh, given the chance to speak for himself, see, because the Apostle Paul knew the law through the education that he received. Because when they arrested him, he knew that they had done something outside the law. So he asked to be taken to the courts. And when he was taken to the court of that day, he argued his case and because he had education. God gave him the education that he needed uh, so that he could be one of, uh, should I say, sought out authors of his day and also even for us today. So Mr. Carver went before uh, the, the, uh, the courts, or should I say the House of Representatives, to argue this case. Remember, he's the one uh, invented a multitude of product, uh, produce. Someone said that he helped uh, discover mayonnaise and starch and other products, many products from a shell, uh, should I say, a person that society would not recognize as a person of prominence. He became prominent through the power of God. What about you? You don't have to seek being prominent. 
You just do the will of God, and God will let this brain explore and explode uh, with knowledge and wisdom, and God will place you in a position to be a witness uh, for him without you even carrying a, a, a big Bible to tell people how righteous you are. Uh, certainly, you need to know the Bible, but you need to carry your life of such that people would be able to see the things in you and give you uh, the accolades that you need. I believe the Bible said like this, let your light shine so people can see what? Your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. Don't you want God to use you in these days? I truly believe that God is going to help us uh, come out of the virus but we're going to have to be careful because if he brings us out, we're going to have to give him the credit. Uh, we cannot try to get all the credit for whatever God is doing. I believe it was Paul Martin that sang a song that says, uh, if you're doing anything in this season, don't do it without me. So, Mr. Carver, and you got to understand God had a hand on his life. But one thing I must mention here of how God saved him. He was in a in a barn, <laughs> saved in a barn. He wasn't saved in, in a great revival. He wanted to know who Jesus was. Great men were saved in great revivals, one of which I had a very uh, unique experience in meeting, and his name is Billy Graham. I always admired him as well. But Billy Graham had a desire to play baseball. <laughs> of all things, he was tall, of course, and he was very athletic, and he wanted to play baseball. But I was told that Billy Graham went to a, a church, old country church, I believe in North Carolina. I'm not, I know it was, in, uh, it was in that part of the country. And he heard a preacher preach. And as, uh, I think it frightened him. He actually left the church. And then uh, he was doing a revival. And somehow that stuck with him. And he gave his life to Christ. Well, you know the rest of the story. Some of you may not know Billy Graham. I don't know how you can. But can you understand this man have witnessed and preached to millions of people. And his purpose was to play baseball. But God wanted him to be on his team. And that is his team that was the kingdom of God. Amen. And this man preached the simple gospel. And many people have turned their life over to Christ. That's what God is probably saying to you today. Don't let circumstances dictate your destiny in terms of you running away from it. Go with the flow and let the Holy Spirit speak to you and work on you so that you can be a part of the solution today. So I believe God is stirring it up, stirring up the pot, just like he did even in the day of George Washington Carver. What I want to emphasize with Mr. Carver is the time that God brought him to uh, prominence. Uh, it wasn't nothing that he did for himself. It's something that he did that God put in his heart. And consequently, he discovered things that we, uh, we enjoy today. I was thinking about the peanut butter you know, when you think about all the racial tensions that we have, the white supremacists uh, hating blacks, I, I thought once, and it gave me a chuckle, because I was thinking, I, if you go to every cupboard, if you had the opportunity to open up every cupboard in the white supremacist home or kitchen, you'll probably find a jar of peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> and they may throw it out after they find out a black man was the one that discovered it. But see, when you put people down, God will put you up. And something unique about the peanut, but uh, the peanut that I thought about, I picked peanuts when I was younger, uh, when I, you know, very young, in Mississippi, I think it was, and uh, I didn't understand uh, the uh, how it. A peanut butter, I mean a peanut rust, but I found out that the peanut actually grow underground, and on top it had the foliage is green like a regular plant, 
but in order to get to the peanut, you have to pull it up from the dirt and pull it up and shake the dust off, and then that exposed uh, the product, the peanut. Isn't that how God does us? Sometimes God let us be rooted up and shaken off and exposed to discover our value. And that's what uh, Mr. Carver discovered his value uh, in the peanut. And then he said to uh, the people he wanted to use uh, that as an opportunity for people to understand how God really works. And isn't that something else? We are in the same situation. I believe God is pulling us up out of the dirt, uh, out of being marginalized citizen. God don't want us to be preaching separatism. God don't want us to be preaching hate. God wants us to show that he can take a person like George Washington Carver, like you, like people that I have just recently met, uh, Sandra Rice, somebody young like that, and expose them and open doors that they could not do it themselves. Boy, isn't it something when God just opened the doors for you and then make room for you and you used to idolize maybe people uh, that you used to see on TV or read about. Now, God is bringing you before them to let you be the one that will bring the message. Sometimes the less you know <laughs> will bring more glory than the more you know. Because if God puts you in a situation, God don't want you to take the credit for the supernatural intervention. I've had uh, many uh, situations in my life uh, that brought me before great men. And I must say that I'm godly proud uh, that God uh, brought me before a great man. Not for myself, but for me to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and to encourage them. Because even people that have money, they need encouragement. Because money can't save people, but money can make you do what, uh, allow you to do the things that you need to do uh, to help with the ministry of God. So let's ask God to lead and guide us. So Mr. Carver, uh, I, I know I don't know all your history, but I certainly can say that God raised you up because in 1939, God allowed Mr. George Washington Carver to receive the Medal for Outstanding Con Contribution to the Southern Agriculture, mainly because of his research on the peanut and sweet potatoes and their contribution to the Southern farmer. Here the Southerners would not let him even sleep in a hotel where whites slept. But he received the highest honor in 1939. He received that highest honor uh, from the President of the United States. What I'm simply saying to us, in the pandemic, in this racial unrest, in the time that we live in, what about you? What about you being allowed to let God use you? I'm looking for God to use me. Uh, but give me the courage. So my prayer each day is three things. God, give me wisdom, give me courage, and give me spiritual strength. Those are my, my three tiers of my prayer because I don't know who I'm going to meet. I, I was told, and I said this to myself, I meet more people by accident than some people meet on purpose. And why do I meet them? I don't know all the time. But I do know this that those who I meet is minds to pour into their life and they are to pour in mine. We are help of the one another. I'm sure Mr. Carver did not do this alone, but he did prepare himself to be one of the greatest uh, botanists, scientists in the world. And we still eating his peanut butter. <laughs> Hallelujah, we still using his product. If you saw a picture of this man uh, in some of his biography books, uh, you would say he's so unassuming, very frail looking and tall, but God uh, used him, hallelujah, to, to introduce people 
to Jesus Christ. That's why I wanted to talk about uh, now all things do work together for the good. But God must be talking to somebody out there. God want to give you an idea, a dream, not just to gloat, but to give testimony that he is able, hallelujah, to bring you out and to make you what you should be and to let you, hallelujah, do what you can, hallelujah, to bring glory to the kingdom of God. Go ahead, uh, Mr. George Washington Carver. I know you're in glory now. I think he died in 1941. Wow. That's something. I was born in 1949. So he actually died uh, nine years, uh, eight years prior to my birth. I was born May 25th, 1949. Wow. I am getting younger in, in a sense, but I'm getting older because I, I feel it. But I do know that God is using you to bring glory to the kingdom of God. I thought I'd share this with you in the life of Mr. Carver because of the lifetime that we are in when people are thinking you are nobody. Hallelujah, you are somebody. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And it, you got to prepare yourself as Mr. Carver prepared himself. If you're not a scholar, if you're not a, a, a person of former education, God can still give you ideas. If uh, I believe God blessed Bill Gates. As someone say he dropped out of school, but he probably one of the most richest man uh, in in the in the United States or in the world. And God can and hopefully in the way he's doing helping other people. He's a philanthropist and look how he's helping people uh, in the in the industries that need his help. Look how many millions of dollars he has given to people to help others. Oh boy. I, I told somebody one day uh, that I'm the poorest philanthropist at that time. <laughs> but I believe God is raising us up so that not that we can tell about how, how much money we got, but how what we do with the money we have. That's the key factor. If you are going to be a witness, you got to let God let your light shine so that the world can ask of you the hope that is in you. Well, I, I done preached. Uh, the way I felt that God wanted me to bring this message today is simply telling you that we know that all things work together for the good, for them that love. Now remember, that's the key word, those that love God. So if you're not a Christian today, or you are saved and you haven't demonstrated your love for Christ by being obedient to his call and struggling to be, hallelujah, a holy saint. And I ain't talking about holy, self-righteous. I'm talking about, oh, repent when you're wrong and asking God to give you the Holy Spirit to give you strength. Thank you, Jesus. Well, this concludes my message today. I'm excited. And you that are listening today, hey, go to your Bible and ask God to give you a revelation of his word. And then every day, sing a song, sing a melody to your heart to God. And lastly, I'll say this. Uh, my mom died over a year or so ago. We were not really able to have the funeral like we would like it because the weather was so inclement and so bad, and uh, we just couldn't do it. But I went to the gravesite today, and my brothers went before, and in all family, she was well-loved. She was the mother of our church. And she died at 90, I believe at 94. And, but I went there today, beautiful sunset, sky was blue. It was about 70 some degrees. And, and at the grave site, uh, you know, God would even use you to, to witness at the grave site. So one young man uh, who worked for the funeral home because they was about to have another funeral. And I thought it was uh, the person who they was going to bury at that location. They had cleaned the area out, and this guy came up to that, and to make a long story short, he happened to be uh, a pastor's son. And God had placed that pastor, he was from a Baptist church here uh, in, the, in Tacoma, 
his pastor and his father had been sick. And God had placed him on my heart to call. And I felt so condemned uh, that I hadn't called. But when I talked with this young man at the site, he said that was his father. After I mentioned who, uh, uh, he told me who he was. And I did not know. I said, it's something how God let all things work together. I said, well, I will call your dad. In fact, I got his number. I will call him. And I did that, to, well, it was on Saturday. I did that Saturday evening. That's what I'm trying to say, is that in your daily walk, God will bring you before people that you need to pray for, need to encourage, and they need to hear from you, and you need to hear from them. So all things do work together for the good, for them that love the Lord. Peace be unto you. And hopefully we'll see you again next week. So if you're tuned in, go to God. Say, God, tell me more about my purpose and help me to prepare myself for it. Well, that'd be all. And I will see you if the Lord delay is coming. I will see you next week on the same place so you can hear a word from God. Let's go in prayer right now. Heavenly Father, thank you right now for giving us a word to inspire us and to uh, that we may share the, with those that are listening, that they may grab hope to it. And when they grab hope to it, they will be able to say, God, thank you for using me. Thank you for letting me be a part of your purpose. It may be washing dishes in the kitchen. It may be sweeping floors of uh, the hospital. It may, hallelujah, just caretaking for uh, uh, their, your in-laws or your loved ones. But whatever it is, let God get the glory. Lord, get the glory out of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. And God, if you, those that are here, my voice, that are not saved, help them to receive you as their personal Savior. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray, amen. Well, until next week, God bless you, and thank you for tuning in today. Peace. Givelify is giving simplified. Givelify is the simplest, most beautiful way to give and track donations to the place of worship or charity of your choice. You're not limited to the cash you have on hand. There's no need to write checks, and there are no complicated forms to fill out or text message codes to remember. Givelify automatically pinpoints your location and intelligently identifies the fundraiser, worship service, or conference you're attending without the need to search. Since Givelify automatically detects where you are, making a donation can be completed in as few as three taps. Tap 1. Use one of the pre-configured denominations to choose your donation amount. Tap 2. Select the campaign to which you'd like to contribute. Tap 3. With your stored credit or debit card, complete your donation in one tap and get an immediate donation receipt. Setting up recurring giving is a simple two-tap process. Tap the frequency you'd like, and you'll never forget to make your gift. Givelify lets you easily see your complete donation history. Mark the place of worship you normally attend as your home for quick one-tap access. Givelify. Tap. Give. Done. If you would like to give online, through the church's website, go to Greater Heights kojic.com. From there, you would go to give, add the amount that you would want to give, and then hit submit. 